In this tutorial, we're going to look at how easy it is to use score symbols and text in Logic to trigger key switches for different articulations in a software instrument. Very often, key switches are MIDI notes, which obviously need to be outside the range of the instrument. However, these can be confusing in the score editor and messy in the event list. Using score symbols and text also allows us to see at a glance where the switch is and what it does. I'm going to use a specially developed macro, the Combo Remapper, to simply convert these to MIDI note key switches which the software instrument will respond to. For this demonstration, I'm going to use the Chris Heinhorn's trumpet section in contact, but this will work with any software instrument which uses key switches. For example, you can use this to switch between matrix cells in Vienna instruments or between layers in Logic's EXS24 sampler. I've played in a simple Caribbean style tune using the basic sustained trumpet. This is how it sounds before the score symbols are added. Not very interesting yet. Here's exactly the same sequence after I've taken about a couple of minutes to add some score symbols and text to trigger the different articulations. Spot the difference? Apart from the obvious ornaments and growls, I also added staccato dots to some of the notes which triggered actual played staccato samples which sound much more lifelike than just playing normal sustained sound but with shorter MIDI notes. Because we can use text as well as score symbols, your only limitation is the number of different articulations available in your software instrument, and a big advantage is that on our score editor you can see at a glance exactly where the articulations are no more hunting around in the event list. I've already assigned a few different articulations to key switches in contact. Here they are. We've got C is assigned to sustain, C sharp, short notes, D, shake, E flat, fall, E, flutter tongue, and F is an ornament. The next step is to map the score symbols and text that we're going to use in Logic to the corresponding key switch in contact. This involves using some transformers in Logic's environment to convert the score symbol metadata into note on key switches which contact will respond to. Normally this involves a lot of complex cabling and transformer settings, but to make this very simple I'm going to use the combo remapper which I previously pasted into the logic mixer environment and positioned next to the contact instrument. There it is. The remapper has to do its stuff before the contact software instrument, so I need to create a simple MIDI instrument to use in the arranged track list instead of the normal channel strip with contact. I then connect the three together using cables. So here we go. Let's create the instrument. There it is. I now click on the top right hand corner. A cable appears and I move that across to the combo remapper. Now at this stage Logic will ask you if you want to remove the channel's port setting and I just click on remove. You can't see it here because it's to the right of the screen but trust me I'm clicking on remove. All I have to do now is cable the combo remapper into the channel strip. OK, let's assign the score symbols to the key switch articulations now. And the first one is Tenuto on C. Then we have Staccato, C sharp. Next we have a trill on D. Then a fall on D sharp. Then we have text, and we've got a choice of four, text one, two, three, and four. I'm using text one, and I'll explain why that is later on E. And the ornament in Chris Heinhorn's, I'm going to use a turn symbol for that. Turn, there we are, on F. Now to add the articulation switches to the score. I shall start with some staccato dots. 
Using score symbols, I don't have to worry about making them earlier in time than the note they affect. Score symbols can be entered at the exact position of the note, and the data, called metadata, always appear before the note in the event list. This means they will always trigger the articulation before the note sounds and make editing easier. Here we are, score symbol metadata note, metadata note, metadata note, always positioned just before. Now some tenuto marks. When you add score symbols for key switching, one thing you must do is hold down the option key while writing them in, otherwise they will not create the necessary metadata in the event list to be converted to key switches. This also means they are independent of the note and can be moved freely with the layout tool. Now we're going to add some ornaments. and The first one is a trill. I'll put that just there. Next one here. <coughs> The articulation in Chris Hindhorns is called a minor ornament, so I'm going to use a turn symbol for this. Place it there, make sure it's going into the right position of the bar, and then I'll use the layout tool to move it slightly behind the note. Then we need a couple of falls. These can be quite tricky to place, and the best thing I find is to put it above the note, and make sure you've got it on the right bar and beat. Once it's there, use the layout tool to move it vertically and horizontally so it displays in the correct place. Finally, I'm going to add some text, and we have a flutter tongue as an articulation in Chris Hindhorn, so I'm going to call that a growl. G R O W L. There we are, growl. And if you remember, we chose text one in the remapper. Each bit of text can be assigned a unique identifying number so that we can use several different words for different key switches. We assign that number in the event list using the second data byte value. And here we are in the event list. The number we want to change is this one here. I can change it to 1 as we have text 1 in the remapper. We've got any number there from 0 up to 127, but 1 is the one we want.